Hello, uh, I'm Julia Tulowski, and uh, I'm very glad to welcome you to this program here. This is the screening uh, of the film Discovery Utopia that was uh, put together uh, by Moscow Design Museum, and we uh, will um, hear today from one of its authors, Olga Druzhina, who is Director of Development and Curator for International Project of Moscow Design Museum. And this film we are showing as a finissage for an exhibition that we did together with Moscow Design Museum and that opened at the Zimmerle a little bit over a year ago, but had to be closed um, within a month because of the quarantine. And unfortunately, we, we hoped we would open the show in this winter or spring, but it didn't happen. Uh, but it was a wonderful show and a wonderful project, and it was a great pleasure to collaborate uh, with MDM and uh, with Olga, with Alexandra Sankova, the director of MDM, Stepan Lukyanov, uh, who was the designer for the exhibition and produced wonderful um, designs and uh, gave us a lot of very valuable advice. Um, so I thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for their input to this show. And uh, as a um, closing remark, uh, we will um, screen the film that we actually showed at the opening of this event, uh, in physically at the Zimmerle but I'm glad to present it virtually and hopefully it will allow more people to see. And um, now I will give the floor to Olga who will introduce the film, uh, then we will, we will show it and then uh, we will welcome your questions and answers. Please welcome Olga. Hello everyone. Julia, thank you very much for such a nice introduction. And first of all, I would love to say that I'm really glad and I'm really excited to be here. And I'm very, very grateful for the great opportunity to share with you the most, one of the most important parts of our design history. So the film Discovering Utopia tells the previously untold story of the VNITE, the All Union Scientific and Research Institute of Technical Aesthetics. In the beginning of the 1960s, design became a part of the state policy. And as a result of this, in 1962, the VNITE was created and uh, with uh, the legendary designer and uh, brilliant manager Yuri Solovyov in charge. And Yuri Solovyov was the director of the Institute during 25 years. And uh, the Institute brought together most progressive and most prominent Soviet designers and became the head organization for the nationwide design system. So, the VNITE was a leader in the design field in the USSR, and the main office was located at Vedenha in Moscow, and you could see this office uh, in the picture on your screens before our webinar, and its 10 branches operated in uh, major Russian cities and other Soviet republics extending from the Baltic Sea and uh, Till, uh, far, till uh, the Far East. Uh, but today, not so many people, even in Russia, even among experts, don't know about this institution. And uh, one of the reasons why this is so, because our history was interrupted so many times. And every time people wanted to start from scratch and to eliminate everything that was in the past. So in our work, we tried and we want to fill up the blanks. It's also important to note that before the VNITE, in the post-war year, there was a great lack of uh, professional design training in the country. And uh, the Soviet industry wasn't advanced enough to manufacture their own 
goods. And in the late 1950s, the Minister, Soviet Ministry of Trade established so-called sample products rooms where Western goods such as irons, vacuum cleaners, televisions, coffee makers, and so on, could be taken apart, studied, and then copied. But the problem was that the resulting products were far, often far removed from the originals. And again, because of the poor technical capabilities and the lack of good materials. So the NITE was supposed to be the first Soviet design organization to carry out original design work. The film was created on the basis of interviews with the uh, Vnite former staff members. And it tells the story of, of unique institution by the words of people who took part in its creation. And for most of them, it was the first interview in their lives. And unfortunately for some of them, it was the last one. And um, I have to say that uh, uh, at first they were, really, really shy and it took us some time and efforts to open them up. And again, because uh, for so many years, nobody was interested in them and in their work. Uh, and uh, in our documentary, we aimed to feature the most significant NITE projects, projects that were way ahead of time. And because of that, not so many of them were put into mass production. But also, we wanted to show the epoch as seen by people in design field. And uh, for me personally, it was uh, very important to find out how the form of NITE designers see their activities, their work, their projects uh, after so many years, and how they can explain us to themselves why uh, and what uh, what what will the reasons why not so many of their designs were realized and uh, whether they rethink reevaluate they work and the creativity or not and characteristically most of our speakers emphasized that Soviet design wasn't commercial at all. It was oriented towards, let's say, working men, working class. And of course, especially in the late 70s and in 80s, it was mostly about ideas, uh, theories, methods, Again, because designers faced huge challenges in getting their pro projects adopted. So it was a kind of a paper design, kind of an escapism. And in this regard, I, I can say that uh, it might be compared to famous paper architecture by the Soviet visionaries. Initially, the interview were recorded and uh, used as a part of our exhibition that uh, represented the Russian Federation on the first London Design Biennial in, in uh, 2018, 16. And uh, the exhibition was a big success and it was extremely popular both among wide audience and uh, professionals, and it was awarded the first prize of the biennial. And the exposition was called Discover in Utopia as well, but it had a subtitle, The Lost Archives of Soviet Design. And uh, it's the very truth. The collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 led to the crash of the whole design system in the USSR. The connections between industrial and design institutions were lost. Design schools, design faculties, and special design institutions and ministries were closed. A lot of uh, factories were privatized and their equipment were, was readjusted for new needs. 
and uh, all this happened to the to to the Vnita as well. And uh, I also have to say that in 1990, uh, many Vnita designers immigrated. They became very successful in the West uh, because their holistic and systematic approach to design was independent of nationally and technologically specific features of production. In 2015, the VNIT was absorbed into the structure of one of the Moscow universities. And during this process, a lot of models, prototypes, and archives were discarded, unfortunately. And now we are collecting our past, our design heritage, bit by bit. And I strongly believe that this documentary is a big step in reconstruction of our design history. So I don't want to take up more of your time. Let's uh, view the film. And after that, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. A person of any era lives in two spaces at once. In one, he's completely surrounded by nature and the animal kingdom. He's part of it. But on the other, he is constantly reshaping the environment added by items made with his own hands. Time barely affects nature, but it fundamentally alters the world of things. One can boldly assert that the entire history of the daily life of humankind consists of a constant reshaping of such things. That is, the art of design. We're in the 2010s. At the Moscow Design Museum, long years of work have gone into the project Discovering Utopia, Last Archives of Soviet Design. This is research aimed at restoring such an astounding and unique phenomenon as design in the USSR to contemporary Russian culture. Никто об этом не знает, и в России об этом не знают очень как бы узкий круг специалистов. Просто черная дыра, как будто у нас в СССР дизайна не было. The museum's team of tireless young scholars spent day after day immersed in the archives of the past in search of a forgotten and practically lost world, Soviet design. But did it truly even exist? Все думают, что образцы дизайна копировались западных, а у нас все было, просто об этом никто никогда не рассказывал. So what sort of phenomenon was it? What was design like in the USSR? Through whose efforts did it exist? And why don't we know anything about it today? Design was absolutely безымянный. Никто не знал, кто это сделал, что это сделал, не понимал для чего и почему. These are unknown pages in the history of Russian culture. One of the Moscow Design Museum's main missions is to uncover the forgotten names of Soviet designers and talk about their personal fates and projects. Это уникальные люди, создавшие уникальную среду в том государстве, в котором это было практически невозможно сделать. Это люди, которые отдавали все свои силы, интеллектуальные, эмоциональные, для того, чтобы создать что-то новое, для того, чтобы создать материальный мир, для того, чтобы улучшить жизнь людей здесь и сейчас. Our society undergoes constant social changes. But the dream of a new life stays the same. Soviet designers were dreamers. They designed the ideal material environment for a person. Their bold projects were ahead of their time and the capabilities of industrial production existing then. Their design was perfect, but unrealizable, as with any utopia. Если говорить о таком понятии, как утопия, то это же несуществующая местность, да? А мы говорим о существующей, поэтому это антиутопия. 
все существовало, все было в реальности, но при этом почему-то все-таки не произошло. То есть э, это пример абсолютно какого-то сюрреалистического видения, когда вроде бы было, а на самом деле не было. The environment surrounding us varies for a child, adult, a student or a specialist for people of different professions and ages. Soviet designers try to contemplate each item of daily use, imagine every possible variant of its relationship with a person and then render it organic for the human body. So there are no minor or insignificant elements here. Indeed, the main purpose of design is to create holistic and harmonious surroundings fully meeting the material and spiritual needs of a human being. The path to creating this lies in complex design, focusing less on individual things and more on their totality, on the system. It's 1962 and the time of Khrushchev's thaw. The USSR party leadership is keenly attentive to the development of industrial design. The USSR Council of Ministers decides to create Vigny ITER, the all-union scientific research institute for technical aesthetics. Its main task was improving the quality of Soviet goods. We understood that in the country design is needed. We were young and goal-oriented. It was not so important who and how to work. We had tasks. We took care of everything and did everything. А в НИТ надо говорить как об уникальной структуре, подобной которой нет в мире вообще. В НИТ создавала дизайн для шестой части суши. Она уникальна, и нигде ее не могли повторить, да и невозможно было повторить. Founder Юрий Соловьев. Соловьев сыграл огромную роль, потому что создать такую систему в стране в советское время, в рутинное время, 15 всего точек у нас было, там 11 филиалов и 4 художно-конструкторских подразделения, все они у нас собирались на балансовую комиссию ежегодно, отчитывались о своей работе, получали задания на будущий год. Это надо было иметь большое обаяние и быть очень неординарным человеком. Yuri Slovyov possessed talent, an abounding energy, an adventurous character, and extensive ties with the ministers and party leadership of the Soviet Union, which allowed him to do what was impossible for regular Soviet citizens. Было много интересных проектов, была очень творческая атмосфера, какое-то чистое такое сотрудничество, всегда чувствовали локоть друг друга, и всем этим успешно управлял и создавал коллектив, и, конечно, Юрий Борисович Соловьев, ну и его помощники. Vigny Eta was a nationwide centralized system for design activities that encompassed 330 of the country's cities. The All-Union Scientific Research Institute for Technical Aesthetics was the head organization of this system. Советский Союз существовал в условиях плановой экономики. Нужно было все контролировать и планировать централизованно. И для этого как раз и был создан ВНИТЭ, потому что не все у нас, как всегда, имеет пирамидальный вид. Within several years of the Institute's founding, branches were being opened all around the country, from the Baltics to the Far East. Working here, under one roof, were designers and artists, architects and psychologists, philosophers and art historians. For me, it was not just a job, it was a wonderful school, it was a life, it was a life. It was a service, it was a mission, in the service of ordinary people, in the service of life, in the service of какие-то светлых гуманистических идеалов. These were the best minds of its time. They did tons of research and created thousands of interesting projects. But nearly all of them were just on paper. Мы потом как-то поняли, что для дизайна, конечно, желательно, но не очень обязательно, чтобы проект был как бы внедрен. Но что такое дизайн? Дизайн это обязательно сбыт. А почему его не было? Чтобы делать наш, нужно перестроить все производство. Это длинная цепочка, вот, которая не была непреодолима. 
Ни один завод не хотел заменять свои линии. Для них это самое болезненное. Вот они гонят свои э, чайники. И для того, чтобы сделать другой вид чайника, нужно поменять линию. Но зачем? Ведь и этот покупают. Внедрение. Это слово было и в центральной газете. Все плели, что да-да, все это внедрение будет происходить. А на самом деле подрубало под корень. Сам проект – это уже некая ценность. Такая культурная, если хотите, или проектная самоценность, которую можно показывать, обсуждать, говорить. Ну, железо не пошло, условно говоря. Вот. Но, тем не менее, это как бы в культурную ну, в некую среду вот это как бы вошло. Чем было интересно в ней это то, что при отсутствии вот такой, казалось бы, встроенности в систему производства была возможность как сказать, делать дизайн без скидок, без учета того, что а заказчик хочет длинное и красное, там, или квадратное, но зеленое. И можно было делать, исходя из неких представлений о том, какой дизайн должен быть. Конечно, было очень много идеализма, но что-то внедрялось. Все это, хотя, наверное, отчасти и утопия, но в то же время и нет, потому что все это есть в сознании, все это есть в пальцах и головах молодых. Дизайн в НИТ, конечно, это бумажный дизайн в основном. Ничего в этом плохого нет. Как ценится наша бумажная архитектура 20-30-х годов, считается вообще высшим достижением архитектуры. Так и бумажный дизайн – это тоже вот такой вид. The working man is the target of most of the design projects. Soviet design on land, on air and on water. Its future is a world of objects fully reformed, humane and convenient for everybody. The Institute is subordinated to the State Committee for Science and Technology. It is engaged in developing and introducing artistic design methods, defining product design requirements, and conducting scientific research, as well as establishing professional ties internationally. В эту систему дизайна включались все основные стороны дизайн деятельности и система образования, и система проектирования, и система разработки теории и методологии дизайна, и вопросы, связанные с кадрами и распространением дизайна на разные уголки России. Vinny Etta had 10 branches open in individual republics and large industrial centers. Leningrad, Svidlovsk, Khabarovsk, Tbilisi, Baku, Yerevan, Minsk, Kiev, Kharkov and Vilnius. Each branch of industry had its own art and design bureaus. There were 1,500 design teams and units in the large plants and factories. Нитэ развивала и развело в СССР невозможную движуху. И не могу себе представить, чтобы сейчас что-то было на таком уровне. Характерно не, не столько ориентация на коммерческий дизайн, сколько именно дизайн как способ сосуществования в этом мире. То есть это получалось некий подход к, к стилю жизни, ко, ко всему. Концепция такого тотального дизайна, что ли. То есть это э, именно э, формирование неких э, идей. Lying at the base of Vene Ites activities is a global idea to conquer all spheres related to design. First, the Soviet design theory had to be worked out in detail. Thus appears at the Institute a design theory department whose employees were sociologists philosophers and art and culture historians. Не надо проектировать все велосипеды сразу хвататься, надо проектировать то, что нужно. И что нужно потребителю. А что нужно потребителю, надо заранее вот эти вот задать, вот так мы назвали тогда картами словесных портретов будущих изделий. Вот такую фразочку такую взяли из криминалистики. Расписано, это изделие нет, еще даже его не собирается делать. Но оно расписано, что, оно, что там должно быть в этом изделии. The department publishes the journal Technical Aesthetics, which quickly becomes the most important design mouthpiece for the Soviet Union. It also publishes books and methodological handbooks and manuals on ergonomics and design psychology. 
А чем дальше, тем я все больше и больше понимаю, что в ней ты совершенно особая и заслуженная школа не только в сфере дизайна, но и в сфере культуры. Причем не только где-то в СССР там, или у нас в России нынешней, но школы мирового значения. Дизайн обязательно это, как я говорю, для вас, для вас. И вы будете этим пользоваться и благодарить того, кто это сделал. Но я хочу сказать о том, что дизайн – это не какое-то шаманство. Это очень грамотное проектирование. Конечно, у нас была своя особенность, потому что жизнь была серая, однообразная, все было в дефиците, и э, все силы были направлены дизайнерские на то, чтобы людям дать хоть вообще глоток воздуха и увидеть хоть как-то, что можно жить более в другом окружении хотя бы. Хотя бы не только ковер на стене, хрустальные люстры, и что там у нас еще было в каждой квартире, но и э, нормальные вещи, которыми мы каждый день пользуемся. In the Institute's design departments, experiments are running on the design of industrial products and equipment for residential and public buildings. The ergonomics department helps the designers with this complicated work. Вот наш отдел эргономика у нас был мощный отдел эргономика в нашем институте. Само название эргономика в присоединении к дизайну появилось в обнитой. Любопытные фильмы даже снимались в обнитой для того, чтобы доказать, для чего нужна эта самая эргономика. Где-то в середине 80-х, мне кажется, была тема, связанная с рабочим местом тракториста. И для того, чтобы определить, как это все надо по-хорошему сделать. Испытуемого тракториста опутывали проводами, сажали в его значит, ДТ там какой-то 75. Он ехал и проводил в спашку, а за ним по этой же самой свежевспаханной земле ехал автобус, в котором тряслись ученые эргономисты с огромным таким шлангом, кабелем, подключенным к этому самому трактористу. И они сидели, уткнувшись в, в приборы, в осциллографы, быстро-быстро записывали, что же там происходит с трактористом, как он потеет, как он доволен или недоволен, как он прыгает, с каким усилием он нажимает рычаги, когда у него устает спина и что он для этого делает. То есть тут масса вещей, которые надо замерять и понимать а, вообще, как с человеком обращаться по-хорошему, по-человечески, а, уважительно. Когда а, мы смотрим, что они супервизировали на художественно-конструкторские бюро, на производствах, это вообще целиком какая-то потрясающая, огромная, очень такая комплексная работа, в том числе, например, да, стандарты по дизайну, стандартизация, или определение, в чем функция дизайнера. То, чего вообще раньше не было в СССР, они, по сути, создали профессию и наладили механизмы работы. Mock-ups and prototypes for future projects are created at the Institute's own experimental workshop. Это был маленький заводик, находящийся на территории в НИТ. Для того, чтобы говорить о дизайне с руководством, им надо было не говорить, а показывать. И показывать это очень важно. Опять да, заслуга Соловьева. Он никогда не показывал вышестоящим органам картинки. Он всегда показывал готовые изделия. Будь то вагон, такси, станок, мотоцикл, радиоприемник. Все должно было быть э, идеально воспроизводить готовую вещь. И иногда даже в идеале работать. Сделали как бы, демонстрационный макет, Он очень точно сделали, с покраской, там, со всеми там, элементами, там, металл, не металл, там, где, что блестит, не блестит. Показали, вот какой должен быть этот станок. И это туда поехало на Милан. Они прибалдели, что тут, оказывается, из такого можно сделать вот такое. У нас была выставка в Манеже, вот я забыл, когда в 85-м да, дизайн на службе качества с выставки был украден один из макетов, думали, что он настоящий. The staff at the information department monitors the situation in world design and put together a unique professional library. 
У нас в Овнийте была создана уникальная, прямо можем сказать, уникальная библиотека, в которой были представлены все наиболее интересные работы, связанные с дизайном. Мы специально заказывали это за рубежом, привозили из различных командировок. Кроме того, создавался архив, поскольку различные работы были всегда связаны с проведением предварительных исследований в области дизайна, и эти исследования ложились в специальные отчеты, которые также шли в архив в НИИТЭ. The Center for Technical Aesthetics is opened in Moscow in 1978 to popularize design and educate practicing designers. Наш дизайн-центр был первый в России и единственный в России. Другого не было, аналогу ему тоже не было. У нас проводились семинары, дни информации, трасс-квартал. Мы на витринах дизайн-центра выставлялись изделия филиалов или больших заводов, например, э, Ленинградский фарфоровый завод свою продукцию выставил, Дулевский фарфоровый завод, самый крупный в Европе, э, свое 200-летие отмечал на наших витринах. НИТЭ, по большому счету, был еще окошечком в мир дизайна, потому что библиотека в НИТЭ включала в себя все самые свежие журналы с точки зрения выставочной деятельности, потому что в Москву привозили дизайн зарубежный, привозили дизайн британский, привозили дизайн итальянский, привозили отдельных дизайнеров вроде Тима Сарпаневы и устраивали им персональные выставки. Самое главное, это была некая среда творческая, когда можно было собраться, все держали руку на пульсе, где что происходит, где как, что меняется, как, куда ветер дует, где кто чем занимается. Design unites. A flow of various kinds of information, products and technologies from abroad causes excitement among Soviet citizens. For the designers of the USSR, this is a window to the big world and to new perspectives. We могли увидеть западный дизайн вот реально абсолютно не так как у нас может быть излагалось. The Iron Curtain is open slightly for the propaganda of Soviet design. In 1968, Vinite held the first international exhibition in Sofia, Design in the USSR. The Institute organizes 12 large expositions in 21 years. Many of the night's employees, previously restricted from leaving the country, go abroad for the first time. Each is carefully checked out prior to the trip for fears of escaping from the USSR. They were called Design of USSR or first Soviet design. У нас закралось такое вот сомнение, что это правильный советский дизайн. Тогда есть, значит, какой-то там не советский дизайн. Выставки наши воспринимались даже лучше, чем мы ожидали. The words design and designer were not officially used in the USSR, but foreign design exhibitions were held starting in 1964 in Moscow, Kiev. Все знают, что в то время термин дизайн не разрешался употреблять в официальной литературе. И Горлит проверял каждое слово, чтобы мы, не дай бог, там не назвали какую-то работу дизайнерской. In 1965, Vinny Etter becomes a collective member of ICSID, and 10 years later, a grandiose international congress is held in Moscow on the theme Design for Human Beings and Society. I officially came out of the decree of leave because such an event could never be missed. All the stars of design from different countries that we finally saw. Then they were all gathered together on the front of the journal. The first time in 1965, the stars of foreign design socialized with their Soviet colleagues, sitting on experimental cardboard furniture. Для советской действительности это все было чем-то необыкновенным. 
1971, the Interdesign series of international design seminars opened under the aegis of ICSID. По сути, это была попытка выработать единый дизайнерский язык, и мы поняли, что именно проектный язык может объединять дизайнеров разных стран в их э, творчестве. The Knights branches welcomed foreign specialists who solved regional problems together with Soviet experts, improving the urban environment, equipment for supply and sale of bread, village design, futuristic clocks, and design for the elderly and disabled. Вообще, в НИИТ, чем интересен как организация, тем, что, может быть, впервые даже в мире к дизайну, как к области профессиональной деятельности и как к области, которая отвечает вот за весь предметный мир, отнеслись комплексно. Может быть, в этом был своеобразный перегиб. То есть все пытались научно обосновать, свести к каким-то нормам, регламентам, отчетам. Ну, ну такова специфика планового такого административного Хозяйство. The Institute gathered around itself creative youth. There they read forbidden foreign journals, listened to trendy music and threw parties. Инопланетяне мы все-таки были в какой-то степени. Потому что, ну я не знаю, такой дух творческой свободы. Серые будни превратились в страшные праздники. Творческие праздники. The creative atmosphere reigning in the Institute made possible several incredible projects which we're still talking about today. Next Generation Taxi. A special vehicle for taxi services. A small bus, reliable, maneuverable, compact yet spacious with a flap for in the body and internal trunk sliding doors and a separate driver's cabin. It's comfortable for the passengers and the driver. The baggage and compartment is in the passenger section. The lowered floor makes it easy to get in with luggage or a baby carriage. A motor controller makes it possible to open or close the doors without exiting the vehicle. Two next generation taxi prototypes were created, one of which was in operation on the streets of Moscow for a month. The vehicle did not enter mass production. Next Generation was the, quote, predecessor of minivans appearing 20 years later. Bella's Hall Truck. A symbol of mass construction in the USSR, a unique design solution where the vehicle attains a load capacity of 27 tons, while yet remaining user-friendly for the operator. A cab with a negative sloping windshield protects the driver from dust and dirt. There is hydropneumatic suspension for the wheels and a general hydraulic system for power steering and body hoist. An important element for work in a quarry is illumination. The new model has a unit with six headlights. The Balaz 540 was awarded a gold medal as an international exhibition in Leipzig. The model entered production and mass exports. The characteristic configuration with the driver's cab shifted to the left, and this is still used today in the Bellas factory's products. We now move from industrial items to large-scale complex projects. The Electromira design program is the first in Soviet practice to design an industry's products for standardized production lines for implementation at 40 enterprises throughout the country. The goal of the program is to review the full range of electrical measuring instruments, which include over one and a half thousand different types, to design connections between them and to create a language of communication for the equipment and the operators. Nearly all of the Institute's departments and the majority of branches participate in the program. A set of universal, unified elements for assembling instruments is designed. Standardized solutions for the workplace environment, including clothing, packaging design, and corporate style, are being created. 
The expected results are to reduce the number of electrical measuring instruments by four times, lower production labor intensity by five times, and improve the equipment's ergonomic and aesthetic properties. Observe the Tamar Wastes Management Program. In the late 1970s, the Soviet leadership started to give serious thought to the problem of environmental pollution. Work began on a design program for improving the system of waste collection and recycling secondary resources. Абсолютно уже современная тематика связана с экологией, с мусором, с облагораживанием городской среды и так далее, и так далее. Он включал дизайн не только самого оборудования для сбора мусора, но и дизайн самого процесса. Results. Means for accumulating, collecting, storing and transporting secondary resources are designed and a uniform is created for the staff. Also developed are means for collecting garbage appropriate to the type of waste, from bags to containers. A clean transport process is proposed. Containers are not flipped, but loaded onto garbage trucks. An information campaign is devised from flyers to TV spots and thematic exhibitions. In 1986, the design program is tested in Balti. The BAMS design program for developing a range of tape recording devices. The program's aim is to design products for specific social groups based on their preferences. After consumer studies, four star preferences were identified, classic, instrumental, traveling, and youth, and three options for the apparatus set, stationary, portable, and automotive. Results. 16 samples distinguished by usage purpose and stylistic solutions. The development materials are placed in a series of publications and users and methodological material for system-wide design projects. Design program Urban Equipment for Digomi 7. This is an urban planning, architectural and design experiment for organizing a fundamentally new environment. The aim of the program is to create a residential area with enhanced functional and aesthetic qualities. The process of improving the new residential area occurs simultaneously with its construction, taking into account the latest achievements in industrial house building, national traditions, and the culture of neighborhood living. At the heart of the project lies the idea of modular units from which various street constructions are assembled. Kiosks, benches, display stands, transportation stops, fences, and canopies. Homo telecomus, the cumulative human. The goal of this program is to design a personal media system linking its owner to the global information network. There are four systems for four age groups. Telecommerce nanny for the smallest, telecommerce teacher for school kids and students, telecommerce secretary for those who need to receive a wide range of information, and telecommerce aid for those who are older or with restricted capabilities. The devices can be worn as bracelets, clips, necklaces, glasses, and even rosaries. We're talking about a universal means of communication, data storage, and health monitoring. And to complete the parade of Vigny Ita projects, the Sphinx home radio and TV complex is one of the night's most famous ideas. It's a super functional informational community system, Sphinx and is also a smart home prototype. Показать в перспективе, к чему может прийти бытовая радиоэлектроника. Он должен был охватывать все квартирное пространство. Сама идея была абсолютно революционная. Это не отдельные телевизоры и магнитофоны, стоящие сказать, в жилище, а вот такие центры, многофункциональные, информационные. The project is focused on experimental laboratory research of technical solutions 
Work on the receiving, recording, storing, and transmitting information is carried out by a central processor with a universal storage device and distributed to LCD screens and speakers set up in apartments with the help of wireless connections. The project remained at the mock-up creation state. Естественно, это все было в виде макета. И когда заказчик после этого стал выступать, это был какой-то человек из Министерства электротехнической промышленности, он сказал парадоксальные слова. Зачем вы все это мне показываете? Мы ничего не можем с этим сделать. Нам, нам нужен магнитофон, нам нужен телевизор, нам нужно что-то еще такое более... Конкретное. Это было именно самые передовые с точки зрения мировоззрения. То есть вот все, что появлялось только самое прогрессивное, это все как бы первым появлялось там. И музыка, и стиль жизни, и образ жизни, и, и значит рассуждения, литература, все было. У меня апофеозом было, это когда сказали, что будущее за плоскими телефонами. Это было в начало 80-х. Тогда еще не было вообще плоских телефонов, и, то, и мы сделали вот э, такой плоский металлический телефон. И это ругань, тогда были худсоветы, то есть там была система принятия такая, прежде чем показывать заказчику, художественный совет, где сами дизайнеры друг друга оппонируют. И отдел эргономики, и, и сами дизайнеры кричали, что как можно плоскую э, вещь прикладывать к круглой голове. It was such an incredible volume of activity. But why don't we know anything about the projects that preceded and predicted the emergence of such popular products as German Volkswagen minivans or American iMac computers? После того, как Советский Союз в 90-е годы развалился, конечно, было отторжение всего советского. И филиалы, которые находились в Грузии, в Армении, в Украине, в Беларуси и других странах они просто уничтожили свои архивы. Институты закрывались, переезжали из одного здания в другое. И, конечно, информация стала таять на глазах тогда. Но и в России, в Москве происходило то же самое. Например, Центр технической эстетики, который находился в цоколе здания «Известий», по сути, это был такой советский музей дизайна, который полностью был зачищен и уничтожен. Феномен советского дизайна в том, что он изначально, безусловно, был утопичен. По сути, даже если мы берем конструктивизм, то это абсолютная утопия, которая и не была в полной мере осуществлена. Она тоже была прервана, причем довольно грубо. Феномен советского дизайна вот в таком каком-то трагизме его. То есть это, с одной стороны, птица Феникс, которая восстает каждый раз, а с другой стороны, это Атлантида, которая <свят> утонула навсегда. Нам хотелось для себя самих восстановить историю, потому что мы понимали, что очень просто изложенной этой темы или как-то очень понятного какого-то такого синопсиса его нет. И слишком много черных дыр в нашей истории – которые мы бы сами хотели заполнить информацией. И, к счастью, это еще возможно сделать. У людей это вызывает такие же точно чувства, как у нас. Когда они понимают тот размах, который был в Советском Союзе, когда они понимают, сколько человек работал на эту систему, какие проекты были созданы, и научная школа, и насколько это все было грандиозно, насколько это было уникально, и что потом это все было утеряно, а потом по крупицам сейчас восстановлена. Эта мозаика только-только начинает складываться. И непонятно совершенно, почему эта тема столько лет лежала на дне, как Атлантида, никем не открытая, о ней никто не рассказывал, ее никто не изучал. Это просто возможно, потому что это было вчера, и кажется, что что было вчера, это не так интересно. Когда мы приходим к дизайнерам, мы говорим, ну где же ваша макета, где же ваши чертежи? Они говорят, ну что ты, Саша, это же было 20 лет назад, или это было 30 лет назад. Да, но вещи, которые были сделаны в Древнем Египте, можно найти, и они находятся в музеях. А то, что было сделано в НИТЭ, Мы разыскиваем годами.
Thank you very much, Olga. That was a wonderful film. Very informative and enlightening, I would say. <laughs> uh, I would welcome um, everyone who to type uh, questions to Q&A and, or, and uh, uh, use this opportunity to ask uh, one of the authors of this film uh, directly about the, 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 one of the most knowledgeable source on the design in the USSR. Um, so let's see, do we have questions? Yes, we have a question from uh, Joe, Joe's uh, Siegel. Um, thank you for a fascinating documentary. Was Nite um, with its all encompassing approach to design inspired by the Bauhaus? Was there any connection to the Bauhaus? Uh, I, uh, I would say that it was connection to constructivism. And actually, only in Vnite, uh, Selim Amarovich Khan Magomedov, who was the first uh, uh, author, started writing about uh, constructivism and it also, it also and it, again, it was in the walls of the Vnite. And I think that uh, through constructivism, through Putumas and to put in, that might be a connection with Bauhaus. And uh, can you elaborate please about the uh, connection uh, of uh, Nite to constructivism, because I think it was on this, um, uh, several levels, um, you know, kind, kind of visual yeah, I, and conceptual and... Uh, I think that mostly it was, uh, uh, at first, it was on the level of studying, because before, uh, before this period, before the beginning of 1960s, uh, not so many people knew something about constructivism and this um, theme, this uh, movement was kind of forbidden in the Soviet Union and uh, only in uh, Vnite, in, in the beginning of 1960s, in the middle of 1960s, this uh, story started to be um, revealed. And uh, of of course, some ideas from constructivism were taken by the Vnite designers. For example, they uh, wanted to create multifunctional things. Uh, they wanted to create things that uh, would be affordable for many people. They wanted to uh, create the things that um, could last longer than, for example, uh, Western goods. So I think uh, in many, many levels. And uh, uh, in the set, uh, from, from the set side also, because uh, uh, both uh, constructivism and uh, Vnita design were kind of utopia because uh, both in 1920s and in 1960s and 70s and 80s, there was a big gap between the designer thoughts and the designer projects and the capabilities of industries. Um, it, it also uh, seems to me that um, design in the uh, 1960s, judging by the film and uh, by some other sources, was a much freer field. Um, maybe less uh, restricted in ideological sense. And um, uh, it seems to me that uh, it, it was through the design that um, the uh, names of the avant-garde artists were revived in the... Yes, uh, yes. It, so, yes, it's mostly through, through design, yeah. So, so there was the, also the kind of the connection and the um, sort of the bridge to the um, avant-garde was done uh, exactly through design rather than any others. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that they started uh, studying avant-garde uh, artists as designers at the first 
at first. And after that, uh, this door is, was opened. <laughs> For further research. Yeah. We have a question from Margarita, actually three questions. The first one, are there plans to continue this research in Vniete and Soviet design in the future? Yes, they are planning and uh, we continue our research on Vniete and other design institutions because Vniete was the most uh, important, the head uh, organization for the design system, but they also, there were a lot of uh, different design organization at ministry, like um, for furniture, toys, cars, and so we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> we continue our research. Yes, it seems to be a, a big and uh, fascinating field. Yes. The second question from Margarita, uh, is there a relationship between the work Nieta was doing and developments in contemporary des Russian design? I don't think so. As I said before, not so many people even in Russia and among designers know about uh, this project. and. The, our, uh, one of our goals is to, to make it popular, to tell about this, uh, but I don't think that there, are, there is uh, any connection. So contemporary design took a completely different course. There is yeah. no, yes. no sense of think, yeah. no, no yes. sense of heritage and inheritance from the new Yes, people. yes, I'm afraid it took um, the Western way of development it's not bad but it's different and again it's not um, uh, uh, it's not because we don't like our heritage we just don't know and uh, again this gap it's um, the situation in 19th 1990s when the, the whole institute was destroyed and the, a lot of design institutions were um, closed and the archives were discarded. So it's, it's just uh, was so difficult to find the basis in this uh, heritage because we, we don't know our heritage enough. <laughs> Yes, and I will open sec uh, the third question uh, from uh, Margarita. There will be a catalog of the exhibition. We were delayed uh, because of the pandemic, but hopefully uh, we will mm -hmm. finish it very soon. Uh, there is a question from, uh, oh, okay. So, so we have quite a few more questions. Um, uh, from Joe's Siegel, uh, you mentioned that most of Niete designs were never realized in production. Were some of these designs picked up at international exhibitions and produced elsewhere? For instance, in the Global South. I'm not sure what Global South is, but maybe. But were they produced by um, anywhere in the West or anywhere else if they were not produced within the um, were these ideas correlated to the designs mm -hmm. that were produced? Uh, they were known abroad, definitely, because uh, Vnite um, conducted a lot of uh, exhibitions abroad, and but it, it was mock-ups, it was sketches, and it was prototypes. Uh, and uh, I know only one example when um, Italian company asked uh, Vinita designers to improve their, uh, I don't know how it's called in English, kind of um, stanok. Um, I'm not even sure. Sure, it's, it's like, a, like a tool for the factory, it's, it's, right? It's, yeah, it's a big, it's big, tool, big tool for the for factory. factory. <laughs> yes. And it was a great success. And it was a, a project uh, from um, 1965, 1960s, uh, no, 19, 1970s, and it was the only one when it was uh, when it uh, uh, this project was made for 
Italian company, mm -hmm. international company. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Irina. Um, was profit extraction and maximization ever the goal of these designs? Did they export to and collaborate with other countries in the state uh, social in the state socialist sphere or elsewhere? So I think we covered some of this question in our previous one. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, the question I, I from as I understand it were this um, the profit uh, is the goal of this design, but maybe in the plan economy it was a little bit more. Yes, it was, yeah, it wasn't so important in uh, in planned economy, and it wasn't so important uh, in the situation of uh, a lack of everything. And uh, yes, I, I yes, some uh, products were um, exported but only in the uh, country of social bloc. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, because I, I, I guess that was the economical bloc. Yes, yes, well. yes it, was, it was economical exchange, but uh, in the USSR, no, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a question of profit. It wasn't a question of benefit. So this is a tragedy. <laughs> Well, that's like actually an interesting question. Uh, so it it is utopian, but it's a tragedy. But also, does it? Do you think it gives a certain, you know, kind of creative freedom, as was mentioned in the film, that you don't depend yes. on the opinion of the zakashik of the mm -hmm. person who commissioner, who, yeah, commissioner, yes, thank mm, you. I think yes, it's a kind of a freedom and. Uh, Again, as I uh, said before, uh, before the screening, it's a paper design. It's uh, about ideas, it's about methodology, it's about theories, it's about how design can change the world and how it, uh, design can serve um, the humanity and so on. Of course, it's uh, just another level, it's another part of design, more theoretical, so more, uh, more academic. Well, that's an, an interesting uh, <laughs> twist and <laughs> approach. Like, like Bauhaus, in a way, like Fute uh, Mas uh, and Fute uh, Yin. Yes, so there is, the, there is this connection. We have a question from Susan. Uh, were there connections between Niete designers and their contemporaries in theater, literature, or cinema? Um, as there was during the earlier Soviet period when avant-garde uh, avant writers, artists, and directors collaborated or worked in multiple media? Uh, I think that it might be like kind of a private connection, like friendship between uh, designers and writers and directors. But uh, in, um, in work, in terms of work, I don't think, maybe only uh, during the Congress of Exceed in 1965, when uh, uh, Vinita designers, Vinita designers were responsible for this uh, Congress and they prepared multi multimedia show and they engaged uh, Yuri Reshetnikov, who was um, very famous at that time, very famous director, and uh, some other people from this field. And what about Virginia artists, you know, the movement group and, uh, you know, Kolichuk yeah. and uh, so the... the Kolichuk was, uh, was the, um, one of the Vnite designers. And um, together with Alexander Lavrentiev, they, um, they conducted uh, different uh, theoretical seminars. So yes, but um, yes, but it's not, uh, it, it, again, it's, uh, it's, uh, all, it's also in the field of design, not in uh, interconnection between different uh, spheres. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that, for example, in Fanta, uh, 
his exhibition was held held in the uh, Center of Technical Aesthetics. So some, some exhibitions of uh, contemporary artists were held. So there was some connection, but not, not a lot. Probably no, no, there was no, 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 no not, not direct connection. No. My, much, much more restrictions, ideological restrictions in, uh, you yeah. know, in the, yeah. those years than they were in uh, uh, the first avant-garde years. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. actually not much of the collaboration was technically possible yeah. because, again, uh, arts were much more ideologically controlled than design. Yes, yes. Well, we have another question from uh, Anastasia. Uh, could you please speak about the work of the regional NITE branches in Ukraine and Georgia, for example? How was the uh, discussion about the national design traditions and peculiarities integrated into the process? Um, actually, uh, every, every branch was uh, somehow connected to the uh, industry in this region. And yes, they have uh, the main goals like the Moscow office and also they have their peculiarities and they have the uh, specifics. And um, um, recently I saw archives of the Center of Technical Aesthetics and uh, uh, it was kind of a design museum of the Soviet period. And um, they carried out a lot of exhibitions. They held a lot of exhibitions on uh, NITA branches. And in every exhibition, the water part de uh, devoted to the uh, decorative arts of this region. So they emphasized this connection between uh, folks art, between uh, decorative art of the region and in industrial. So it was a, it's so the curious combination between kind of crafts and, and industrial design yes. to, yes. to add this kind of uh, so two, uh, uh, two, part, two parts and two, uh, let's say, two sides combined in branches design. On the one, one hand, it uh, uh, somehow related to the tradition arts, to the folk arts. And on the other hand, it's related to the uh, region, regional industry. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> Olga. I think uh, it was a wonderful film and a wonderful event. Wonderful to uh, have you here. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining us. And uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you to ev everyone who uh, uh, watched us and uh, participated in the event. Um, my big thanks for the questions. And uh, please uh, do join us for um, our next events and uh, check out our um, news on the website and media. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you for having me. Thank you for screening our film. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>